Hey, 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 welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. In today's episode, we are talking money, baby. We are talking increasing that income and how you can improve your sales strategies and boosting your revenue through good sales tactics. So something slightly different, something that we don't usually cover, and I'm super excited because we are both in sales. We've both done sales in different capacities. So this should be a very interesting conversation with my co-host, Brandon Duff, who is miles and miles and miles away from me, but he looks pretty close up on the screen. Hey, buddy, you okay? I am doing amazing. Uh, life is great, man. I, I just uh, filled up my second cup of coffee. We are banging out these amazing podcasts so definitely subscribe to the channel so that you guys get up to date on our time sensitive material but a lot of our material is evergreen also so things that are like ai if you're not learning about ai right now and you should definitely check out our previous podcast about that that is time sensitive material and you don't want to be behind the curve on that so definitely subscribe to the channel and like and share our podcast because we really appreciate it and life is great. So how are how are you, man? Do you know what? I'm, I'm slightly ill. Um, thanks to my beautiful little toddler, because he's ill and he's not sleeping. So I am tired. I've got bags under my eyes and I'm slightly ill. But it doesn't matter because this podcast is awesome and this is fantastic. So I love getting up well, in the morning. I love doing this. Well, you still look beautiful to me. I'll put some filters on. Uh, is, are they AI filters? Is this an AI avatar of Brian that I don't know about? Oh, no, man, I haven't cloned myself yet. Although I have heard people have. Um, but yeah. that's a whole different conspiracy theory. Oh, well, the, the, no, it's happening. I mean, I've seen um, people. I, I was watching a, uh, a YouTube video the other day where a guy was talking like this. And the camera was like right, right here. So he was reading the script. And he trained it so that it shows him as if it's looking forward and mouthing the script, but he's facing a different way. So uh, you can definitely clone yourself. Damn. Okay, now we're going new level AI, um, new levels. So let's get back to having the money to afford that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So maximizing your income, boosting your sales and revenue, that is today's topic. And what are some of your favorite strategies? I have a few that I'm going to bring out. I think that I just remind, rem, reminded myself of this conversation I had the other day. But what are some of your favorite uh, strategies? So mine are always, it's obviously, again, like, so I came originally from the, the close and background on the phone. And it was interesting how I switched from a 10% close rate to a 60% close rate over the phone and yeah. it was going through that process was was really like it was it was life changing because obviously if I can get an extra 50% like close rate of course it's going to impact my sales yeah. and like the different changes of going through that was was really good so in terms of the biggest thing is obviously making sure you're having those conversations because if you're not talking to anyone you're pretty much goosed now this is definitely from the number share volume of conversations, this is definitely your game. Um, and we always say like you love, you can just grind and grind all day, and you can make sales. Yeah. I'm very much more. I'll sell one to many from a, a presentation or, or right. that style. Um, it's mixing those things up, isn't it? That makes a massive difference. So I always talk about the concept of selling versus saving, don't I? Like especially with our students, because so many people just want to sell their shit. They just want to get in there, get their pitch, and get out. And yeah. it, it drives me insane because, like, you just, for instance, and I use this analogy all the time, you wouldn't go up to a girl in a bar and say, hey, do you want to come back to ours for sex? Because she'd throw a drink at you. She'd slap you. She'd probably go get a boyfriend because you haven't even done that due diligence. You've just gone, you're, you're beautiful. I want you. And it's not going to work. You're going to get that slap, and I'm going to laugh. Now, just because you hide behind a keyboard – like it doesn't mean your strategy should change. Like you should not be going for the, you should not be going for the pitch straight away. And when you turn your concept from selling into serving, you actually get build relationships rather than hitting numbers, and you can convert a lot more for a lot longer. 
So by doing that, that's how I literally got my 10% to it, a 60% close rate was actually caring more about the person and coming away from the script, going through a framework perspective rather than a script perspective. But the one thing I wasn't very good at was numbers, was getting the numbers. Yeah. Like when I was a closer, people brought the calls to me, which is nice. Whereas like when I came away from closing because their marketing strategies weren't bringing enough calls or stuff like that, it was then how do we increase the traffic, the eyeballs, and that's yeah. something massive. So it's if you do want to increase your income, you need to be increase, increasing the eyeballs on you, the eyeballs on your offer, and how many conversations you are having through that process. And that is why I do like this the one to many sell. It it converts at a lower percentage, I'd say. But if you if if you filled out the the room effectively, the Zoom room yeah. or the group with enough numbers then you can do the one to many sale rather than the the dm sale sell but as you say the conversions are lower because it's a it's less personal so you are playing a numbers game in that respect from a traffic perspective but you are saving time because you're only doing one pitch instead of 10 pitches right but, so there's yeah. pros and cons to both now i am going to hand this over because if it wasn't for brandon i would still not be doing dms he like you need to make some money, go and talk to someone, get into sort of slide into someone's DMs and actually have a conversation and pitch someone. I was like, I was like, yeah, but I, look, I like this presentation. It was like, a bit, I thought if he, if he was close enough, I, I thought Brandon would have smacked me over the head and told me to go and get into <laughs> DMs. Um, so the, this guy is a king at increasing sales and when he goes for it, damn, he can hit five, 10 sales a day. Like when he's like, right, let's go. So how do you just flick that switch? Yeah, so I created a post, what was it, yesterday? Did you create yeah, it? Yesterday. I created, no, I did create it. <laughs> it was one of the posts that I'm uh, feeding uh, AI because I I put one style in and I want to add this style. So um, just obviously feeding it more data. But uh, this was a post that I created. It pretty much just said like, I was talking to high ticket affiliate marketers because a lot of the high ticket affiliate marketers, they look, it's direct sales, essentially. They're mm -hmm. trying to pitch someone in the DMs. And uh, I find that a lot of them don't like to pitch. Um, they don't like to do sales. They don't like to jump on calls. They just like to point at text and <laughs> they just like to hope that someone say, makes a sale. And so I wrote uh, a small little guide to so I'm going to kind of uh, go over that with you guys now. And then I'm also going to go over some of the things I do while I'm actually, um, in the DM. So I said, uh, and this, I, I bag on high ticket affiliate marketers all the time. Uh, so, you know, it, it just, it's my target audience that I'm shooting for because I know there's a high failure rate within high ticket affiliate marketers. So that's who I, I focus on. So one is knowing your audience. Um, and that's not even in this guide, but you have to know your audience and who you're pitching to, because, um, if you're pitching to someone that isn't, has no care in the world for what you're selling, you're never going to talk them into actually, uh, doing what they're wanting to do versus I know that high ticket affiliate marketers want to make a lot of money and they're not getting the results that they want. So mm -hmm. that's who I, I target. So I go on to say, um, you just don't care high ticket affiliate marketers. And I say, you don't care about improving yourself. And they always talk about investing in yourself and blah, blah, blah. But I say, when was the last time you read a book on sales? When was the last time you uh, practiced mock uh, training or sales? Like when, like I got flustered the other day and I posted on Facebook. I said, who wants to do some mock training? And this is in our, our group. And I think two people messaged me. It was kind of late at night, Mike and uh, Isaac, and they absolutely loved it. They loved how they, they role play with me. They were talking about, um, they're like, Hey, like it was great because Mike literally just went into role play mode right away. He was just like, Hey, so what are you, uh, what are you, um, selling these days or whatever like that? And um, we just, it was great. It was just a great mock trial to overcome objections. I taught him things that I would say he would pitch too early. I would say you're pitching way too early. You don't even know me. And I would give him little uh, 
strategies in a sense. And it was a good way to practice without worrying about losing the sale essentially. Mm. And the more times you can practice, the more times you're going to learn to overcome objections. You're going to learn to, when someone says this, you can counter with this. When someone's leaning this way, you can teach them, you can kind of pull them the other way. So being able to practice makes perfect. So that's super important. Um, I also go on to say that, are you pitching every day? And that's just, again, going with practice. Like if you're not pitching someone every single day, how are you going to get objections to put into your toolkit to overcome them? And so if you're not doing this every single day, then you're not going to be uh, a master at your craft. And so this, and then, uh, did you even finish the training that you bought? I see this all the time with uh, people that buy courses is they get into a course, they don't, they've maybe listened to like the first, I don't know, few training modules. And then they just kind of just don't finish the course. They like, I got my affiliate link. I can just go out there and sell. Um, so that is some things that um, are like something that I wrote. And so these are some of the books that I recommended how to win friends and influence people. I think this is super important. Uh, one of the major concepts that I uh, got from that book, and I haven't read it in a while, but I probably should read it again, is mirroring people. Mm. When you mirror people, you are essentially, when someone leans forward, you lean forward. When someone's leaning back, you're leaning back. You're matching their tone, their cadence, their um, their how they phrase their words. So you're mirroring them because you want to create similarities in yourself so that you're just like them because people like people just like them. If you notice, I only really talk to guys when I'm pitching people because most guys can relate to me versus if you look, if you go to anybody's profile on Facebook um, and you see their audience and you scroll the comments, if it's a female influencer, there's mostly going to be females in the comment. I would say it's more like, 70 30 maybe even 80 20 kind of rule mm -hmm. and if you look at male my uh, profile it's gonna be mostly male commenting on me uh maybe some of some female like she's recently been commenting more on my stuff and a few others but that is a few uh things that mirroring is a good practice to actually do uh implement in your business the slide edge which is a great book learning about essentially uh, the compound effect, how everything compounds upwards or compounds downwards over time. So you're not taking care of your body. If you're constantly, uh, it's funny because when you're a kid, you're like, oh, my metabolism is so great. And then you, uh, and you still eat shit. I can still eat shit because my, I'm young. My metabolism is high. But if you keep doing that, it's going to constantly, it's going to catch up to you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to not be as healthy as you should be because just metabolism slowed down and you've not been compounding upward. You've been compounding downward. Same thing with money. If you have debt, like credit card debt, and you keep only paying the minimum and you keep acquiring more debt, that compound effect of interest rate is going to turn you into like having to go bankrupt. So all these different ways. And then I include like how to sell like crazy, which talks about digital marketing funnels and that sort of thing. Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, which you just recently read and you loved it. One um, hell of a book. Yeah. So re really good, great books. And then I go on, you don't care about your business. So first one is you don't care about self-improvement. You don't care about your business. Um, and I say, let's be honest. Most of you have not even set up a uh, business LLC or an entity where you can write off these things lower your taxable income, uh, you know, you, you haven't set up systems to essentially make it so that you're not, you're working on the business, not in the business. And so all these different things that they don't care about the business because they're an employee, uh, essentially. And so, and that's what I talk about in high ticket affiliate marketing is you're essentially just a, a commission only salesperson, uh, employee in a sense. And so you don't care about your business because you don't have a business. I go on to say, and I say, and I obviously poking fun the whole time. Uh, I say, oh, you have a cute little side hustle. And I, I put it, I cross out hustle because they're not hustling. It's a gig for them. Um, it's a commission only job. And so the, I, I love my special little unicorn that I put as an emoji. And then I said, the special unicorn, because they think they're special, is I'm my own boss. And I say, no, you're not. You don't have a business entity. You don't have 
Uh, you can't write off expenses, train, and allow, lower your taxable income, blah, blah, blah. And so I go on to say, you don't care to show up. Uh, I see this happen all the time. I went through my DMs in the last five weeks, and I would say 90% of those people that I was talking to like aren't posting online anymore. They're not, uh, com they're not engaging with me. They're not doing stories. They're not showing up on their business and they're not showing up at all in their business. So, and I give them tips on how you can start using technology, using AI, chat GPT, Facebook CRM, super Facebook tools, a scheduler, Facebook professional, where you can, and we were talking about this off air, where you can essentially schedule your posts from your phone using the Facebook professional mode instead of just the regular mode. You can use VA, VAs um, using online jobs or Gen M, which is now Car Arcadium. So all sorts of different things that you can show up to uh, your business, even though they're not showing up. And then the fourth one was, you don't care about your customers or your clients because all you do is post selling. So, and I see this, a lot with new affiliates is they typically just say, um, you can sign, sign up to make six figures a month um, by following my seven figure mentor who is giving a discount 50% off today uh, if you can sign up. And it's just sell, sell, sell. Right. Or rah rah posts, which are just like motivational posts or like, um, like helping, who wants, or what is it like? celebrating someone's wins where they'll say this person made X amount of money, but it's not them. It's just someone else to get people to rah, rah. Um, and these are like more of, um, attraction mar marketing groups where their people are all in the same group. They'll post someone's win. And then all those same people will just comment on that. And that's not really helping anyone. Um, they celebrate their own engagement. So they're like, Oh, I got, you know, a thousand views on this. And that's not really helping anyone. So they're not actually posting value, so they just don't care. And so that was the whole point of my whole thing is they don't care about their business, they don't care about their students, they don't care about anything, they just care about themselves. I didn't say that, but essentially that's what the whole the thing is. They only care about themselves because they're not putting anything out there that is valuable to the world. And so that is one of the things that, that you can improve your business. But as far as selling, um, I mean, do all that stuff because taking learning, constant learning to improve your craft, doing mock trainings, doing all practice pitching, um, all that is super, super good. But some other tips is you have to control the conversation. Like I, I was talking to a guy who does high ticket affiliate marketing and I was asking questions like leading questions essentially. And I was controlling the conversation while he was reacting and he wasn't actually controlling the conversation at all, he was reacting. So you need to control the conversation when you get into sales. And that's also comes back and wraps around into having confidence in yourself. If you don't have confidence in yourself, nor have confidence in the product or whatever you're pitching, then you are essentially not, it's gonna show in your demonstrations, in your sales pitches, in your videos, in your VSLs, whatever you're doing. If you don't have confidence in the product or confidence in yourself, you're not going to be able to sell something to someone, especially if it's a higher ticket price or whatever it is, even if it's a lower ticket price, then you're not going to be able to sell something because people know that you're not confident. And is if you're not confident in the product, then why are they going to buy it from you? Because if it's not going to solve their problem and you're not confident about it, then there's no way that they're going to buy it because they're going to blind lead in the blind. Hmm. And so that's super important. I also like you need to, you need to, how do I say this? Uh, not put down what they're doing, but show them why what you're doing is better. But say it in a way like where they agree in things. So like, for instance, whenever I'm talking to someone and someone says like, what do you do? I, I was like, oh, I just focus on recurring income. Re and then I put recurring income equals freedom. And then they usually say, yeah, because they know that recurring income is freedom. And so if I can agree, get them to agree on little things like that, those little miniature um, uh, yeses, essentially, those little yeses add up to bigger yeses down the road. And so if I can get them to agree that recurring income equals freedom, and, and then later on, I'll ask them, like, oh, what are you doing? 
podcast now. Someone keeps messaging me, so it's annoying me. Um, so if essentially like I get these little um, yeses or commitments, then I can get a bigger commitment down the road. And if they're essentially just saying, yes, recurring income is freedom. And then I go on and was like, I ask them, so what is your favorite recurring income products? And then they're like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm doing one-off products, but you just said recurring income equals freedom. So, and obviously that's not the same conversation, like it's spread out over time, but that's essentially what I'm doing is getting them to commit to little yeses early and then get them to see what they're not doing and then get them to move to what is actually working, which is what they agreed on in the very beginning. So creating that loop. And so if you can do that, it's going to make the selling process easier. Also, a lot of people just don't, they just, they just try and sell, sell, sell or business, business, business. And we're not all just business owners. We're actually humans. Well, maybe we're still AI. I don't know. It's still possible. <laughs> but um, essentially, like you need to show that people are just like you. You have kids. You have a dog. You like to eat out. You like to go on vacation. You have these hobbies. You have these failures. You um, you you need to be relatable. And if people like, and this goes full circle where I was talking earlier that you need to uh, relate to people. Like I talk to more men because similarities and women talk to more women similarities. And if you can do that and get on, feel like they're the same level as you, then they're going to want, it makes the selling process easier because they can be like, Oh, I'm like, just like them. Essentially this is the, what in their, in their head is I'm just like them. What I'm doing is not working. I should be doing what he's doing because it's working for him because I'm just like him. And so if you can get that into their minds without you telling them that, but with them coming to that conclusion on their own, then it makes the selling process so much easier. And so those are my strategies. Um, we're definitely going to take this podcast and give it to all of our students because I think this is a valuable, valuable uh, training uh, on this free podcast. So definitely subscribe to the channel, uh, like this and share it with a friend if you think this is valuable. Um, and if you could do me a favor, check out the links below. If you guys want to join our cash flow challenge, I highly recommend it because it's really everything that we've done to make recurring income and build a sustainable business online, but also invest in future generations with real estate, with crypto, with uh, using rental cars to make money, like all sorts of different ways to make recurring income. Damn. <laughs> I thought, mate, was absolutely golden. Um, you are right. I was literally sat here listening and going, I am literally taking this link and I'm sending it to our students straight away. They all need to watch this. I would also put this straight in the course. Um, this absolutely is needed. So, guys, if you have liked today's episode, I've loved today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe. Come and join the Cash Flow Challenge because that happens on the daily. That Com like that instructions that like everything that you we've just had I'm I'm virtually lost of words you've got me stuttering, um it was just amazing guys so please come and join the cash flow challenge if you want to build recurring income as Brandon said recurring income equals freedom, and we've all just agreed to it so come and join us guys and we will see you on the next episode, peace.